In phonetics, a flap a tap is a type of consonantal sound, which is produced with a single contraction of the muscle so that one articulator is thrown against another. Contrast with stops and trills. The main difference between a flap and a stop is that in a flap, there is no build-up of air pressure behind the place of articulation and, consequently no release burst. Otherwise a flap is similar to a brief stop. Flaps also contrast with trills, where the air stream causes the articulator to vibrate. Trills may be realized as a single contact, like a flap, but a variable, whereas a flap is limited to a single contact. When a trill is brief and made with a single contact it is sometimes erroneously described as an flap. But a true flap is an active articulation whereas a trill is a passive articulation. That is, for a tap of flap, the tongue makes an active gesture to contact the target place of articulation, whereas with a trill the contact is due to the vibration caused by the airstream rather than any active movement. Tap versus flap. Many linguists use the terms tap and flap indiscriminately. Peter Laidfidge proposed for a while that it might be useful to distinguish between them. However, his usage was inconsistent, contradicting itself even between different editions of the same text. One proposed version of the distinction was that a tap strikes its point of contact directly, as a very brief stop whereas a flap strikes the point of contact tangentially. Flaps are most typically made by retracting the tongue tip behind the alveolar ridge and moving it forward so that it strikes the ridge in passing. Later, however, he used the term flap in all cases. Subsequent work on the labiodental flap has clarified the issue. Flaps involve retraction of the active articulator and a forward striking movement. For linguists that do make the distinction, the alveolar tap is transcribed as a fish hook R, and while the flap can be transcribed as a small capital D, which is not recognized by the IPA. In IPA terms the retroflex flap symbol captures the initial retraction and subsequent forward movement of the tongue tip involved. Otherwise alveolars are typically called taps, and other articulations flaps. No language has been confirmed to contrast a tap and a flap at the same place of articulation. However, such a distinction has been claimed for Norwegian, where the alveolar apical tap R and the post-alveolar retroflex apical flap R do not differ in place for all speakers. IPA symbols, the flap and tap consonants identified by the International Phonetic Alphabet are, the Kiel Convention of the IPA recommended that for other flaps, a home organic consonant, such as the stop a trill, should be used with a brief diacritic, tap a flaps, where no independent symbol for a tap is provided, the brief diacritic should be used, e, g, or, however, the former could be mistaken for for a short trill, and is more clearly transcribed, whereas for a nasal tap the unambiguous transcription R is generally used. Types of flaps. Most of the alternative transcriptions in parentheses imply a tap rather than flap articulation. So for example the flap and the tapped stop are arguably distinct, as a flapped and tapped. Alveolar flaps. Spanish features a good illustration of an alveolar flap contrasting it with a trill, pero, pero, but, versus pero, pero, dog. Among the Germanic languages, this allophone occurs in American and Australian English and in Northern Low Saxon. In American and Australian English it tends to be an allophone of intervocalic T, see intervocalic alveolar flapping. In a number of Low Saxon dialects it occurs as an allophone of intervocalic D, or T, E, G, Baden, Beden, to pray, to request, God to better. GAA to bead, go to bed. Water, vata, water, vada, theta, father. Occurrence varies. In some low Saxon dialects it affects both t and d, while in others it affects only d. 
other languages with this a Portuguese, Korean and Austronesian languages with a English and Portuguese and Sardinian a flap often appears instead of a former L. This is part of a wider phenomenon called roticism. Retroflex flaps Most Indic and Dravidian languages have retroflex flaps. In Hindi there are three, a simple retroflex flap as in big, a murmured retroflex flap as in leper, and a retroflex nasal flap in the Hindicized pronunciation of Sanskrit ruby. Some of these may be allophonic. A retroflex flap is also common in Norwegian dialects and some Swedish dialects. Lateral flaps. Many of the languages of Africa, Asia, and the Pacific that don't distinguish from may have a lateral flap. However, it is also possible that many of these languages do not have a lateral central contrast at all, so that even a consistently neutral articulation may be perceived as sometimes lateral or sometimes central. This has been suggested to be the case for Japanese, for example. The ey language of Australia has both alveolar and retroflex lateral flaps. These contrast with lateral approximants at the same positions, as well as a retroflex tap, alveolar tap, and retroflex approximant. However, the flapped or tapped laterals in ey are distinct from lateral flaps as represented by the corresponding IPA symbols. These phones consist of a flap component followed by a lateral component, whereas in EY to the opposite is the case. For this reason, current IPA transcriptions of these sounds by linguists working on the language consist of an alveolar lateral followed by a superscript alveolar tap and a retroflex lateral followed by a superscript retroflex tap. A velar lateral flap may exist as an allophone in a few languages of New Guinea. Transcription The retroflex lateral flap does not have an officially recognized symbol in the IPA. However, an ad hoc symbol based on the alveolar lateral flap may occasionally be seen. Such derived symbols are becoming more frequent now that font editing software is widely accessible. Note that besides not being sanctioned by the IPA, there is no Unicode value for it. However, the retroflex lateral flap may be written in Unicode compliant fashion as a digraph of the alveolar lateral flap with the right tail diacritic. The palatal and velar lateral flaps may be represented with a short diacritic over the letter for the home organic approximant, although the diacritic would need to appear under the palatal due to its ascender non-coronal flaps. The only common non-coronal flap is the labiodental flap found throughout Central Africa in languages such as Margi. In 2005, the IPA adopted a right hook V for this sound. Previously, it had been transcribed with the use of the brief diacritic or other ad hoc symbols. Other flaps so much less common. They include an epiglottal flap, a bilabial flap in banda, which may be an allophone of the labiodental flap, and a velar lateral flap is an allophone in knight and melpa. These are often transcribed with the brief diacritic as. Note here that, like a velar trill, a central velar flap a tap is not possible because the tongue and soft palate cannot move together easily enough to produce a sound. If other flaps are found, the brief diacritic could be used to represent them, but would more properly be combined with the symbol for the corresponding voiced stop. A palatal or uvular flap, which unlike a velar flap is believed to be articulatorily possible, could be represented this way. Nasal flaps. Nasal consonants include flaps, although these are rarely phonemic. Many West African languages have a nasal flap as an allophone of a uh, before a nasal vowel, pash too, however, as a phonemic nasal retroflex lateral flap. Tapped fricatives. Voiced and voiceless tapped alveolar fricatives have been reported from a few languages. Flapped fricatives are possible but do not seem to be used. See voiced alveolar tapped fricative, voiceless alveolar tapped fricative.